Welcome to Villa del Sol in Pleasanton, California, one of the most magnificent estates I've ever had the privilege of representing. Be prepared to be impressed. Never mind the property is on 1.7 acres of flat lot in Pleasanton, California, which is pretty unprecedented. And the fact that the house, single level, 4,200 square feet of glorious space with mega, mega views. That's actually not what the selling point is, in my opinion. What makes this house so fascinating is the fact that it has an illustrious, glorious past. The original builder of this house's name was John Marshall, who was a prominent Pleasanton architect. And he actually acquired hundreds of acres of land from the Phoebe Hearst of the Hearst family. <laughs> and he spent decades renovating and customizing this glamorous oasis for his personal playground and personal residence. I can't express to you the magnitude of this outdoor space. It's literally stupendous. Not only is it flat, but it's a panoramic view of the East Bay Hills. And the actual lot itself contains 80 rose varieties, two dozen palm trees, a 300 year old oak tree, a redwood forest grove, and we're surrounded by a moat of Italian cypresses. And by the way, the rose varieties all have their own names. My personal favorites, Barbara Streisand, Marilyn Monroe, and Julia Child. Very much of the times. John Marshall actually gave himself a self-imposed deadline to complete his dream home in three decades. Ergo, you have multiple dates across the compound that say this, 1954, Villa de la Sol, 1984. However, John sadly passed away in 1976, so he actually did not meet his self-imposed deadline. However, what he left behind was still absolutely wonderful. This sprawling estate was designed specifically for entertaining. Aside from everything being flat, this glamorous pool and hot tub here, single level living, and huge spaces here for tables and entertaining and dining, what you can't see actually are two backstage areas. And what I mean by that is, <laughs> when you're throwing a party for hundreds of people, I mean, you gotta put all your stuff somewhere, right? So that's why you have two entrances to the property, a side gate here for vendors, for caterers, and a whole separate driveway for helpers down there. And on the opposite end of the property, you have a whole downstairs storage area, which is great for storing scaffolding, decor, decorations for all of your glamorous parties. Tucked away in the corner of this estate is a secret redwood forest. Check it out. It is this serene and powerful circle of redwoods that is surrounding a water feature and also references to Villa de la Sol and House of the Sun on the bench. And if you actually look at all of the trees, there are some leftover really old chains attached to them. Back in the day, during the heyday of the parties, they would string up a bunch of lanterns crisscrossing across this like water fountain for these beautiful parties. And I wanna mention one more thing. It's called House of the Sun for a reason. When you go into the house, you're gonna see dozens of allusions to sun everywhere.
And this is actually a Christmas card from Tom Sears of the Sears and Roebuck Empire. So John Marshall and company were definitely VIPs. The mushroom lamps, the sculptures of the lions, the nymphs, the Greek Roman goddesses, it all adds such a whimsical, magical vibe to the whole property. It's almost like Disneyland meets Hearst Castle. You're probably thinking, Herman's on the street, where are the parked cars? Well, <laughs> this isn't the street. Actually, it's your driveway. Yes, this entire length of driveway spans the whole width of the property. It could fit probably 30 cars, if not more. Plus, you have an enclosed garage. Pretty stupendous. This is the front door. Follow me in. So once you pass these glamorous entry gates, you're gonna descend a slow ramp to the main front courtyard. Enclosed, beautiful, peaceful with these gorgeous owl lamps, um, mushroom lamps, gnomes, and drought resistant plants here as well. And as I mentioned before, this is called House of the Sun. Standing right beneath me is a sun compass. Right behind me is a sun above the little baby water fountain. In front of me is a glorious sun on the front door that is underneath a fabulous antique sun chandelier. Really, truly thematic. <laughs> And here we are into the glamorous golden entryway of 70 Castlewood. I mean, look at this. I feel like a Grecian statue being flanked by these two golden sun columns, right? <laughs> Pretty fantastic. And above me, hand carved decor piece with a rhinestones and backlit with circle lights. Pretty phenomenal. And to the right of me is a fish tank. <laughs> um, it was designed as a fish tank, not used as one now, but I've been told by the seller that the most valuable piece in this house actually is that frame because of all the semi-precious stones which are embedded inside, ranging from emeralds and pearls, all sorts of lovely stuff. <laughs> So this property is actually divided into three wings. The north wing, which are three bedroom ensuites, the middle is just the common area in the kitchen, and then the south wing, which is, you know, a bonus area, wet bar, or um, a special in-law unit, and the garage. Let's start off with my favorite part, the bedroom wing. Let's start off with the jade room. Follow me here. All right. <laughs> Okay, this room has an oriental vibe, and I can say that because I am, but if you look up, there are thematic dragons here, bamboo, and obviously the jade theme here is very, very um, strong. Rhinestone encrusted ceilings, I mean, it is just absolutely gorgeous, like you're living in a jewel box. <laughs> and this peacock here, actually my seller tracked down way back in the day, this was a part of the original estate. My client actually tracked it down because he wanted to bring it back and return it back to its family. <laughs> This is the door to the mini walk-in closet. Again, another sun, more rhinestones all over and precious stones, mini walk-in there. And this is the door to the bathroom. I mean, it's just literally like a piece of artwork. And if there's any doubt that this wasn't John and Edith Marshall's original residence, look up here, hidden away in this beautiful jade room are their names etched in gold. Next up is gonna be the copper room. All right. Again, rhinestone encrusted handiwork atop of the ceilings. And this actually has leather wallpaper from Phoebe Hearst and copper nail studs. Look at that, ergo, the copper room. Beautiful. And this headboard and side pieces here, these side tables are actually owned by Jard Marshall as well. Extremely exquisite details, just gorgeous. These four mirrors were also tracked down by my clients and um, are part of the original John Marshall estate as well. Mm -hmm. 
and the largest ensuite is last. Behind me is the gold room. Ergo, look up. You're gonna be under a blanket of gold. And again, Rheinsold jewel encrusted ceiling, backlit with gorgeous lights and fantastic view of the East Bay and the pool and also your lovely yard. Again, ensuite, three walk-in closets and the sun theme resonates again. For example, even this lock here, it's basically a sunburst. Isn't that great? <laughs> and you've got a big Ben clock above me. And that is the north wing, all done. All right, let's move on to the middle section of the house. That includes the living room and the dining room. So as you can see, huge gargantuan floor to ceiling sliding doors, all brand new or newer on both sides. So when you open up both, you just fling the doors open, entertaining indoor outdoor living, the interplay of you know the outside and inside is just straight up California living, okay? And John Marshall back in the day was a big entertainer. He built this place pretty much to be a playground for the rich and famous and all his little friends. So people like Frida Kahlo, Clark Gable, all hung out here and on the dude ranch enjoying themselves here. Uh, and in fact, Diego Rivera actually painted a mural for him that was on the estate somewhere. It is long gone now, but we have pictures from the press that show it actually existed. So in this living room here, ceilings, original basket weave patterns upstairs and the beams and even the fireplace here. Multiple sun borders around the fireplace and that sun medallion on top there too. This is all original stonework. And next to the living room is the dining room, which is also flanked by two huge, massive sliding doors, indoor and outdoor. Great views of the East Bay as well. If you look up, this chandelier is original to the John Marshall estate, as was the same chandelier, a similar chandelier in the North Wing. And that mirror medallion, kind of like um, accoutrement is also original. Absolutely gorgeous. And here we are in the kitchen. For the age of this house, this kitchen is Huge. And most importantly, while you're doing the dishes, you have a lovely view of the East Bay Hills as well. So it's light and bright. And most importantly, the footprint is large enough. So if you want to do a quick remodel, easy peasy. The bones are there. Last wing, the south wing of the house. Left here is the elevator that goes to the garage, full bathroom to my right, full bedroom that goes onto the front of terrace as well. Here we have a wet bar. Now, wet bar means there's water, there's plumbing here, so if you want to convert this whole area into a separate ensuite, you certainly could very easily put in a kitchenette here. This is used as a lounge area, family room, access out to Redwood Forest Garden, laundry room, more storage behind here. To top it all off, Pleasanton is known as one of the most coveted cities in the San Francisco Bay Area, known for its top schools and also its very glamorous Castlewood Country Club right down the street. World-class golfing, swimming, bocce ball, pickleball, you name it.
Well, there you have it. That pretty much concludes our tour of 70 Castlewood. I hope you've enjoyed it. It is absolutely a one-of-a-kind trophy property. So this is your chance to own a piece of California history. Call me anytime. Take care now. Bye.